Hello, hello. Happy Saturday. Or, well, it's Saturday now, but if this is on YouTube and you're watching it later, it may not be Saturday. So happy whatever day it is for you. Sorry uh, for the long start there. I um, usually let the start run for about five minutes or so and then get going. <laughs> and right as I was about to start, I, uh, my phone rang. <laughs> so I um, had to take a call, but here we are. Um, but yeah, today, um, picking back up on the San Francisco. Um, I have to confess, I actually did a little work off stream. So I'll show you what we did there. Just didn't really want to sit in front of a camera <laughs> or have a camera between me and what I'm working on. So did a little bit of that. Uh, I think it was last weekend. Really, I would get to work on this on the weekends mostly. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's get into it. Just kind of show you what I've done since last stream. Um, I'm not organized. I'll call through through my uh, my planning off here. It's all good though. I. Uh, Got the second of the two catapults done. Let me turn the other camera on. So, if you haven't seen this before, this is the, the photo etch catapult. Um, white and some models. Maybe this camera's better. Focus, focus. There we go. Um, so you can see it's, it's quite detailed catwalks and railings and all kinds of nice stuff as compared to the kit piece which uh what's the right length we'll give it that <laughs> it's not bad i mean it's it's what you can do in plastic so uh, so i are, there's two of those i had done i had started one on stream failed miserably at it finished it off stream did the other one off stream I also did uh, spotlight towers, which where is the plastic piece for comparison? It's really not much of a comparison. So here you've got a much more detailed scaffolding and railings and the, the platforms themselves with the bracing, uh, much more, much more appropriate. You can compare that to uh, the plastic part, which I mean, it's not bad. It's it's at least it's it's a scaffold of sorts. But um, one thing that was interesting when I was building it, I noticed that um, the platform that's that's wider is actually in a different place depending on which piece you're looking at. The the plastic piece has the wider spots lower metal piece has, or the photo etch piece has the, the, the spots, the, the wider spots higher. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I'm sure one of these is right, and I have a bunch of references that I could have looked at to make sure, and if it wasn't like this, I could have tried to figure out how to force it into the other orientation, but I just didn't, uh, just didn't care to. So. As you can imagine, this this took uh, a number of hours to put together. It was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve pieces total for this little tower. That took a little while, but but the the end result I think is is far superior to its its plastic counterpart. Again, nothing wrong with the plastic, um, and it's certainly less stressful. <laughs> Than the than the photo etch part, but the photo etch part is much better than the plastic part. And and I just I just slapped this together really quickly. It, it you could have put it together uh, a little bit nicer, but uh, you can see quite a, quite a difference when using the the photo etch parts. So I'm I'm quite happy with that. 
So today, um, I think I'm going to start with something I know is going to work. So we start off on a good, uh, a good uh, footing, and then start working in a direction of things that I'm not sure are going to work. So what are we going to do? First, um, I'm going to put together the depth charge racks. So I have this uh, Infini model depth charge set that has the depth charge racks and uh, turned brass depth charges. I've used this before for one of my destroyers. It's a very nice, very nice kit. Um, I do have in my white ensign photo etch the depth charge racks themselves, but it has no depth charges. It, it doesn't have quite the level of detail that this does. Um, I just like these better. So the white ensign pieces will end up in my scrap pile and uh, I'll use these. I won't end up using the K-guns. Those were on the, on the destroyers. Uh, not on this, none of this heavy cruiser. So we won't be using those, um, so I'll have a few extra parts left over, but uh, definitely use the depth charge So we'll start with this because I know it works, I've done it before. Uh, what we're going to do after that is uh, probably the um, the float planes. I'm just going to get the... where are they in the instructables? So the the plastic piece, the plastic planes in the in the kit, I hear there. They're nice, um, but the uh, the vertical struts and the struts that mount uh, onto the fuselage are um, just solid uh, in the in the plastic part, uh, as well as the connections to the the of uh, the floats, uh, both the main and then the outer floats, and then the launch cradle. They're all very thick, very solid. What you can do with injection molding, so it's not it's not really surprising. Um, but the photo etch, as you can see, I, I have to remove some pieces, and then it replaces a lot of the components there, making for a nicer um, a nicer float plane. It's going to be interesting because it's molded in clear plastic, and clear plastic tends to be brittle, so it'll be interesting to see how how that works. But I think it'll work well. The first one will probably go very slowly. Um, the second one will probably go faster. And then the last thing I need to do are these uh, these 1.1 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. And, and the reason why I'm not sure they're going to work is I've got the photo etch parts, which are ni much nicer than the plastic parts, except that they come with um, gun barrel details already, but the gun barrels are two-dimensional because it's, it's flat metal that you hold in the place. And that doesn't really look very good. Um, and I've got the, the, the barrels to replace them, but I'm not sure, they're not really designed to mesh with this set. Um, so I'd have to cut these barrels off, add the other barrels, and I'm just not 100% that's going to fly. So. I have a little bit of uh, finagling to do with that. It may not work. And if it doesn't, that's fine. I found some 3D printed versions uh, that I can use in their place. I haven't ordered them yet. I wanted to try it first. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not sure how that's going to go. So we'll see. Um, I'll give it a shot. And uh, if it works, it works. If not, then, you know, then we have a backup plan. So that's our goal for today. I don't know if we'll get through all of it. Um, I also got a couple other things that I don't think I've shown. Um, I wanted to replace the Carly floats. Um, the ones that come with the kit, they're all right, but um, these are much better. So I got some Edward uh, 3D printed uh, Carly floats. You can actually have the, the mesh bottom. The unfortunate part is I need 21 of them for this, this ship, and they come in sets of 10. So I now I'll have nine extras at the end. Uh, but these are nice. They actually come with little photo etch ores uh, that I can put in there with them. Um, so they'll be quite nice once that's uh, that's done. So I got those as well. Um, I don't think there's anything else new that I've gotten since uh, my last stream, uh, but it's been been a while. But anyway, we'll uh, just hop in here and, and see how things go. Um, so I'm pleased with how it's going so far. Oh, uh, another thing I've done is actually I glued the the two halves of the, of the hull together. 
I haven't sanded it down though, and I'm going to have to sand pretty much the entire way around. Um, so if I get tired of working on Photo Etch today, I may do that a little bit if, if we get chatty. Because um, that's something I can do with not a whole lot of effort. There's some th other things I need to do. I still need to remove the plastic uh, propeller guards uh, to get the, um, or the prop guards, screw guards. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, to replace them with the photo etch parts, because those are obviously not in scale. Uh, and they shouldn't be solid like that. Uh, a few other odds and ends I'll, I'll need to do on the hull. I need to decide if I want to drill out the, the portholes or not. Uh, and so on. So, um, yeah, we will just uh, hop in. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to start with the uh, with this, this uh, depth charge set. Um, Y'all, please do let me know if my volume is too quiet on my mic or too loud on the music or whatever the case may be. The only things I don't like about these Anthony sets, they come in these kind of plasticky boxes, and I don't want to bend the photo etch unintentionally. There's quite a lot of things in here, so let's talk about what's in here once I get it all out. It's all of it. It's all of it. Good. So. We have uh, all the uh, turn brass depth charges in there, two different sizes. Some for the K-guns, some for the, uh, the main depth charge racks. Like I said, we won't be using the K-guns today. And then uh, the details for the uh, end caps of the depth charges are there, and then the depth charge racks themselves, plus some, some bracings, and then some hoists uh, to be used to raise and lower depth charges. Again, some of these we will use, some of them we won't. These, I don't think, I think these are for the K-guns. These, these uh, bullies here, I think, are for the, uh, the, main, the main racks. So we'll see what... Uh, See what we need to do. The instructions are, are quite nice, if I remember right. Like I said, I've, done, I've used this one before. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. So uh, I like that they uh, are um, efficient with their paper use. Maybe not their ink use, but uh, on one side you have the uh, depth charge set. On the other side you've got uh, the brass mast set for the Fletcher. Obviously, that's not what we're working on, so we don't need that today. Um, but you can see you got two sets of uh, two sets of instructions for the depth charge set. One side is the main rack. The other side is the uh, the K guns. Again, we're not using them. You know, these racks may not be 100% accurate to the San Francisco, um, but you know what? They're going to work for me. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, what I probably should be doing is using the white ensign uh, depth charges and then cutting some uh, some tubing or some some uh, lengths of plastic to the appropriate widths and whatnot, but I just don't care to. So if I end up not using those on this on this ship, that's fine. But Infinity Models make some great stuff. I also used their um, Japanese I-400 um, detail set. I think it was Infinity that I used for that. Just trimmed my fingernails so I don't... Oh, okay, it's not a... Pretty open. Slide out. Looks like this should come open. I don't want to overly pressure things. The other side. Stuck in there. Welcome to today's stream on Can He Open It? I was bamboozled, like the opening was on the other end. I 
one's not. So I'm going to keep this as if like, I'm actually going to be able to get the photo etch back in there, but uh, we'll see. So, I was out with the dogs earlier. My voice is quite uh, scratchy today. All right, so, um, as I've talked about before when you're working with photo etch, you don't want to cut just everything off at once. Um, and actually, I probably shouldn't have started with this. I probably should have started with the depth charges uh, themselves. So um, I need nine depth charges or depth charge rack. Um, and I use these, um, they're numbered on the other side. Ah, good, they're numbered on the other side. I use these larger end caps for the depth charges for the uh, main rack. The smaller ones are for the K guns, again, that we're not using. Um, so they're actually different. Um, one row of them has, and you'll you'll not see this on the camera, but one row of them has um, two raised portions, uh, por portions on on the side, and one only has one. <laughs> so um, don't want to just cut them all off and then put them on willy nilly. Not that anybody would probably ever notice in one three fiftieth scale once they're on the ship, but uh, just the same. Want to make sure that uh, we keep things ordered. Um, what we will do is go ahead and cut and clean off the uh, the depth charges. Oh yeah, I forgot about these, geez. So there's also these little pins. I don't know what they're for. Some naval historian can probably tell me. There's these pins. Um, I can get them in focus. That go into the sides of the K-guns, and you have to assemble them. You know, so you have these very, this very little brass tube and this end cap that go in there. That's what these are. Um, don't drop one. You'll never find it. But they're basically just little extrusion, extrusions of brass. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, not disappointed that I'm not dealing with those today. Because those were, those were a pain in the butt. They came out looking great, the K-Guns. Um, but I'm uh, not, not disappointed that um, they're not on this, on this ship here. So even though I just said you don't do this, I'm going to go ahead and, and pull out all 18 of the, um, the depth charges. And you can see they, they just kind of get extruded in a, in a length here. So we have to break them apart and uh, clean them up a little bit without completely removing the nub on the end, because that's how you center the um, the end caps. So um, hopefully they get. I think they give me 20 of them, and I only need um, I only need 18 and five sets of four. So. I've got 20 of them. I should have a couple left over at the end, which will be nice. Very nice brass. Um, with the charge set here. So before I get to actually cutting on the on the photo etch, I'm going to separate and clean up these uh, the depth charges. So I tend to just um, get them all cut so that we have individuals and then come back and, and clean them up afterwards. Um, so I'm just using some shears and hoping that doesn't happen. <laughs> Luckily it went where I knew it was. Not the 
best thing for these shears. I should probably have some better shears for this, but but as you can see, it works. So we'll get those all all trimmed up here. I'm gonna try to take flight. Drop my finger. Everybody's having a nice day. First started out pretty good. We uh, took the dogs to a group training class. That was fun. We were out at some baseball fields, so there's a lot of distractions for the dogs and. Walk through some fields back behind them, so there's lots of uh, interesting scents that we try to keep them from focusing on. We don't want to focus them on us. Brought them home, I got some lunch, and we are. It's been a pretty good day. This stream, hopefully, you know how it goes, will be the last of the detailed prep work. And I can actually start uh, doing some painting. Because I haven't painted anything yet. I've got a lot assembled, but uh, not much painted yet. Or nothing painted yet. So I've got some new, uh, some new stuff I want to try for that. So we'll see how we, what we can do there. All right, so I've got all of them separated. I'm actually going to get a little, another little uh, container here, another little lid, so I can at least keep them separate from the ones that need to be cleaned up and the ones that have been cleaned up. We've got these, these very small depth charges. Um, they've got a little bit too much um, of a of a little nub on them. That little Brass connectors, so they need to be cleaned up. I had to put my nerd glasses on for a second, so I can actually see what I'm doing. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get just this on camera, but uh, there's a small little nub on on either end of the depth charge uh, that needs to be there in order to to mate with the uh, end caps correctly. Helps to center them. Um, but on the side which w between which there was a connection to another, there's a little bit too much of a, of a nub there. So we just want to trim that down a little bit. Again, we don't want to lose the whole thing, but it does need to be less. And I'm just going to keep using my, my clippers here. Oop, dropped it. It's not going to be perfect, at least that was my experience last time. I'm sure you could spend the time to do so. Um, I just want to get it clean out enough that uh, you don't have a nub that's sticking out too far. Again, once they're on the racks and uh, enclosed in the racks, that one actually is already pretty good. Um, it would be very hard to notice imperfections with this. So I'm going for good enough rather than perfect here. To, because to be honest, most of these probably need to be trimmed down a little bit further than I am. But uh, that would take time. I don't want to waste, waste on it. It would be less interesting to watch probably. Although you you guys have watched me do some pretty dull things, so at the not too distant future, I should be able to do some airbrush uh, work, and I will try to stream that. Um, the way I've done it before was is via a laptop. So normally when I stream, I've got it, I've got my stream going through my my main desktop. Uh, but my modeling spray booth that I use when I'm airbrushing is 
outside the reach of any of my cables. And I don't want to spend the money to buy a uh, super long HDMI cable. Well, I might have one laying around. If I can find it, that would work. Um, but if I, if I don't, then I have an old laptop that I've used before. But it's seen better days. And uh, like it won't even hold a charge anymore. It has to be plugged in the whole time. Uh, and just launching OBS to do the streaming is uh, well. It just takes more time than it should. So I'll figure out how to do that. Um, like I say now that I'm speaking about it, I do think maybe I have a long HDMI cable. I'll, I'll check because um, I would rather run it on my desktop just for the sake of. for the sake of uh, the power. You're watching me on the big TV so you can uh, listen to my dulcet tones while you're cleaning, huh? Uh, you may be able to see what I'm working on better than I can if you're on a large enough screen. <laughs> I don't know if the resolution is good enough, but... All right, so we now have our depth charges cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and put the end caps on all 20 of them, even though I only need uh, 18 of them. Um, just so that I'm not, I don't have the spares with nothing on them. You can see my <laughs> giant upscaled hands, so you can see uh, how poorly I trimmed my nails and where I accidentally tested the sharpness of one of our kitchen knives. Uh, which was fun. Uh, it's very sharp. Passed the test. Gotta love un unplanned testing of sharp implements with your own flesh. Don't recommend. In, in HD. Now playing. John Screw-Ups in HD. Alright, so I'm only just doing one, one row at a time, one side at a time, so I don't get them mixed up, like I said. Um, there's actually a difference in uh, the two end caps. One has two little protuberances. One only has one. So, do them one at a time. Um, again, <laughs> even though not too long ago I said I wouldn't do all of them at once, I am going to go ahead and pop off all 20 of one side, and, put, and I'll just put them in this little uh, this little lid, um, just so that I've got them all. So I'll, I'll cut them all off, I'll clean them all up, and I'll glue on one side, and I'll repeat for the other. So that's what we are going to do. Maybe time for another knife blade. So I'm starting to feel a little, a little weak. I probably ought to look into getting a, a uh, a handle and blade explicitly for removal of photo etch from trees like this. So they, they dull out my blades really fast. Still attached. What are we attached to? There we go. So what we're doing really is just trying to add a lot of detail to the ship. Um, the, the kit itself, I mean, the kit's not bad. The kit's got some pretty good detail. Um, but a lot of it is kind of at the limit of what you can do with injection molded plastic. Um, so like I showed you, the catapults and the... Um, the spotlight tower that I that I built, they're much much higher quality than than what you can get with injection molded plastic. And and now, you know, the modeling the modeling world is changing a lot. Even even now, um, with 
more and more 3D printing capabilities. Um, there are companies that are coming up just 3D printing stuff. I mean, so I, I think I've showed this before, but um, I got some 3D printed anti-aircraft guns. And uh, the quality of these compared to what comes in the kit is just, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't compare. It's it's crazy how much how much detail they can put in these little 3D printed pieces. Um, so, right with a different camera, share it on the other camera. This camera's not as good. It's, uh, I'm really happy with the way those turned out. I may end up, like I said in the beginning, I may end up having to order some similar uh, 1.1 inch cannons but we'll see how things go today yeah that's a pretty pretty uh, precise printing isn't it um, so you know when I started modeling not that I was good enough to use it but you know photo etch was was available but not um, not extremely common there were there were a few manufacturers um, then it kind of became a little bit more popular. And then you started getting a lot of resin uh, replacement parts. So I've got some aircraft, some older aircraft models, um, where you know the the engine cowling might not be quite right. And so somebody produced a uh, resin replacement part. Um, and then you started getting uh, finer detailed. Uh, photo etch and now with 3d printing i mean it's getting to the point that uh before too much longer you can replace you can probably replace the whole model with aftermarket <laughs> um and for some of these ships the aftermarket sets are just nuts um i have the uh, uss texas and uh the aftermarket for it is just Stunning. And quite thorough. <laughs> so she may be my next ship build. I'm not sure. Um, I've got... So I'm kind of working up in size. I've, I've done now... I think I'm dropping these, but not in the, the bin. I'll count them in a second. I'll see them anywhere. Um, I was saying, I started, I'm start, I've started kind of increasing in size. So I, I built two U.S. destroyers. I built the the Japanese uh, I-400 submarine, uh, which was the size of a destroyer. Um, if you're not familiar with that one, that's the one that had the uh, enclosed hangar deck um, that they launched towards the end of the war. Never actually saw any action. Uh, she or her sister ships, the 402, 403. Um, we captured them before the U.S. captured them before uh, before the end of the war and before they could do anything with them really. Um, sank them off the coast of Hawaii actually after ex ex examining them. But anyway, side, side notes there. Um, so th those I built most recently, I've got the I-400, I've got a, a Fletcher, and a Livermore. And each time I've kind of in increased the level of difficulty. Um, and uh, so this is kind of the next size up for me in ships that I've got. Um, I do have a couple more destroyers, but I wanted to try something a little larger. So here we're doing a heavy cruiser. Do I have shelves upon shelves of tanks and warships and stuff? Yes, I do. Um, actually, if you give me a second, I can probably show that. Um, let me let me get these cut off. And uh, this front-facing camera, which is something I'm only recently tried to do. This one that I'm pointing at. 
It's actually my cell phone. <laughs> so I can I can take it off its mount here in a second and uh, walk over to the display cabinet. Although I won't be able to see what you're saying because I won't be at my computer anymore. Okay. Uh, do I actually have 20 of these now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, I did drop them all in there. Okay, let's take a, a little stroll. So, uh, if you get motion sickness, <laughs> maybe stop watching for a second. Um, hey, there's you. All right, I need to turn some lights on because it's dark out here. Yeah, so this is the display cabinet. I got, my wife is hiding in the hole. I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> um, so these are some I built as a kid. And uh, here are the, the three ships I've built so far. The uh, Fletcher there in the back. The Livermore in the middle. With the, Actually, these are the depth charge racks that I'm building now there on the stern. The I-400. Cars and... Motorcycles. There's a. That should look familiar to a few people. And a couple tanks, a couple helicopters, and then some small planes down here. So, this isn't my entire modeling history, but this is my more recent, more recent set. So, point the camera at the floor so I don't uh, show the world my wife. Wife says she appreciates. <laughs> so hopefully nobody got motion sick with that. Yeah, sure. So, but yeah, I mean, I just I bought a, a cabinet at IKEA, and then added lighting and um, dust dust proofing to it. Gus doesn't mind being on camera. What do you think, Gus? You want to be on camera? Yeah, hi, Gus. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I just want to go to bed. Whatever. All right, back to work. That is Gus. He's our Great Pyrenees. Uh, just over a year old now. All right, so before we went on our field trip, um, <laughs> you love him unconditionally. <laughs> um, before we went on our field trip, we cut off all the little, half of all the end caps, not all of them, but half of them. So now we get to clean them up. So I cut them off their little tree or sprue or whatever you want to call it. Um, but the cuts are never perfectly clean. So I have a um, little diamond file um, that I use to clean up burrs off of the photo etch. So as you can imagine, this is something that's a little tedious, but uh, you'd be surprised how, how visible some of these burrs can be um, once you get them painted, I'm going to have to use my other tweezers to hold it still. So I also have this pair of uh, pliers, tweezers, whatever. It's actually meant to be bending, bending pliers. They've got a flat, flat edge you can bend on. But I find them to be handy on holding small parts. Um, so that I can file them down where necessary. Actually, I say that there's some burrs left, but most of these came out pretty well. So 
So I just use the plier to kind of clamp it in place and then... Uh, And file them down a little bit. Move them all to one side so I can separate them from cleaned and not cleaned. Really, that's all it takes. So this one just had the one bear that was notable. Looks like this one is going to wait. He jumped. So we need to get some new uh, tweezers. We're starting to... They don't pinch together quite so tightly on the tips. How are things in y'all's neck of the woods? Uh, Y'all have a move date? Or just know that it's imminent so you're trying to get ready for it. Not specific, but second half of May. I wish you luck with it. I hate moving. Mostly the packing, really. I look forward to hearing about it sometime. In a way that doesn't dox you. <laughs> I said I had three things I wanted to do today, but I might not make through it all. It depends on how my uh, hands hold up to the gripping of tiny pieces. That one looks good. Let's go ahead and put that one over. That one looks fine. That one looks fine. Okay. Some of these aren't bad enough to really need cleaning. Again, not that uh, there's nothing there. The, most of these that I said were fine did have a little bit of a burr, but not enough that they really caught the light. And once I get these painted, you'll never notice. I'm 
Most of these actually came out pretty well. Cool. There were only a couple of bad ones. Rest are good enough. Good enough. All right. So, um, working with metal parts, we can obviously we can't. Well, maybe it isn't obvious. We can't use plastic cement. So normally, I use um, just to me is uh, thin cement. This is extra thin and quick setting. They come in a variety of different types. Can't do that with metal parts. It won't actually bind them. Um, so we use good old super glue. Um, all kinds of glue out there, all kinds of super glues. Um, I've found I, I really like uh, BSI, Bob Smith Industries. It comes in a variety of uh, curing speeds. Um, some people will use the little nozzle that comes with it to apply it directly. I uh, I don't. I have these little trays. They were actually uh, primer trays for uh, ammo reloading. My granddad was a big uh, reloader. Go out and uh, shoot targets and. Uh, Afterwards, we'd pick up all the casings, <laughs> and he'd reload them. Um, and these were this is what with the uh, the primers came in, and the little wells are just about perfect for the amount of super glue I can use at one time before things start drying out. So, got a couple of these that I use for that. You can see a lot of them are starting to get filled in. Um, so we'll just take. Um, got some tweezers that uh, their default position is closed. I use those to hold one of the depth charges. I want to make sure it's not just on the end so it doesn't suddenly squeeze out and get launched into the netherworld or I'll never see it again. Um, I think next time I might actually use a longer lens because this is still not the uh, very close up. Hopefully it's good enough for now. Um, so yeah, now I can I can I don't have to use any focus to, to hold this this piece. Um, just get a little bit of super glue on a toothpick. Add the super glue to one end of the depth charge. Grab one of the end caps. And drop it in place. Again, we've got that little nub in the middle. It kind of helps uh, center the, um, the cap. And that does it. So, again, I won't be able to show this on camera. It's probably too small a detail. But uh, that's one end cap for one depth charge. <laughs> um, one. One end of one depth charge down. 19 more to go. So I'll put the ones that have a end cap on one side into the uh, into this other plastic bin here. Yeah, I really like these tweezers. I got all kinds of tweezers. <laughs> Most of them with various coatings of paint on them. Every once in a while I'll take them and clean them. Um, Most of them are overdue for that. So I'm just going to repeat that process. Grab a drop charge. Add a drop of glue. Does not take much. Grab one of the end caps. Drop it into place. Use the little nub in the middle to center it. And dose. Yeah, it's funny. Um, no, maybe it's maybe it's not funny. I don't know. It's a thing that most of the work I do for these ships 
are these little tiny details. Then the grand scheme of the ship, I mean, you've got a depth charge that you guys can barely see on the camera. Oh, that's the scale of the ship. <laughs> it's a pretty tiny detail here. Um, but I've probably spent already eight hours on just details like this or more out of maybe 10 on the, on the ship. And then when you add to that that I only do this on the weekends, <laughs> kind of shows you why it takes uh, a while for me to finish any of these. Cars and motorcycles, I tend to build faster. They don't have as many, or I don't put as many details into them. I mean, you certainly could. They're much, scale is much larger, so you could uh, do all kinds of things there. You know, here I'm working in one three hundred and fiftieth, so one inch on the model is three hundred and fifty inches. A real thing. Where she to still exist. Fortunately, she does not. Second most decorated ship in U.S. naval history. Set the San Francisco following uh, the Enterprise, which also doesn't exist anymore. I mean, I get it. Maintaining museum ships is not free. It's just sad to lose that history. USS Texas is actually in dry dock right now down in Galveston. They are doing a lot of work on her, which is good. She really needed it. When they were towing her from her previous moorings to the dry dock, she was actually listing for most of the sh most of the of the uh, towing. They had these uh, torpedo blisters on her. Um, that. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're added later on in, in her life. I may be wrong about that, so don't quote me on it. Um, but in any case, uh, they were atrociously leaky. Um, they had a lot, even, even as, as a museum ship, she had a lot of uh, issues that... Uh, oh, I didn't put any glue on it yet. That they had to deal with to keep her from sinking at her dock. Um, but she's getting a quite extensive uh, overhaul right now. Um, they're completely, they completely took off the blisters. And they're putting most of them back in place, most of the blister back in, back in place. But it's in much better uh, condition. And they, it's just, it's just all, all over better. A lot of things are doing for her. Um, interestingly, um, the amount of time between the sail ship, the USS Constitution, and the USS Texas from, from one launch to the other was something on the order of 115 years. And we're actually coming up on 115 years or so since Texas was launched. Those numbers aren't exact, but, but it's close. So the, t the time between them is, is just crazy, and, and the time since. Um, so you know, the, the Constitution was a quite powerful ship of, of her time. For a while, the, the Texas was the most powerful ship in the world. Um... So I thought it would be interesting to build a little trio, build the um, the Constitution, which I don't have a, a good model of, um, build the Texas, and then build something uh, 
modern that's that's relevant. You know, we don't have battleships anymore. Um, and while you wouldn't have called the Constitution a battleship, she uh, kind of served a similar way with all of her cannon. Current USS Texas is a submarine. So I don't know if that if that would apply, but I don't know. I've never built a sail ship, so that would be quite different. Because I would want to do a lot of the rigging. I do actually do some rigging for the, uh, even the modern ships have got some very fine monofilament that I use for uh, rigging lines. And uh, if there's interest, I'll, I'll show that when it happens. It's one of the last things I do. It's very delicate. So I don't like having it on there until I'm just about done handling the ship. Right, I mean, I'm trying to just thought it'd be kind of a neat uh, time timeline, uh, time lapse. I don't know, timeline is probably the better. Show how things have changed. I've been on Texas. Uh, it was a long time ago. I look forward to her dry dock completion. When she's done, I'll go back down to see her. Very different uh, design aesthetic. Uh, her, her classes of ships of that age, late 1800s. Um, compared to something like the Missouri when I visited Hawaii several years ago now. We uh, spent quite a long time on, on the Missouri. Got one of the uh, in-depth tours. It was just my wife and I and a tour guide. Was really cool. Lots of history there. All right, in there, getting there. Fifteen down. Then we'll cut and clean up the other side and repeat this. At least we don't also have to do the smaller, the smaller depth charges for the K guns. If I were doing the the the, the, drop, the main depth charge racks and the K guns, that's probably all I'd be doing today. Come here, come here.
Have y'all played with y'all's airbrush, Penny, Amy, and Kara? Or did you get one? I knew you were talking about it. Not a chance yet. Like I've said, if y'all ever have any questions, I'm happy to address them as best I can. Don't claim to be uh, an expert, but maybe a little bit more experienced. That is what I said, so <laughs> nice ears. Come here, you little guy. All right. Seems like the music got real quiet or stopped, one of the two. It's quiet. Yeah, uh, yeah. Holding a bun and, and typing are not uh, quite conducive to each other. All right, now we've got uh, one side done. You can cut the other end pieces off. I turned up the music because I couldn't hear it at all, so if it ends up being too loud, please let me know. I started playing music in my modeling streams because otherwise, eventually I just run out of things to say. <laughs> um, or I start repeating myself. Like if somebody were to go back and watch my streams, you'd probably hear the same thing over and over again. Like I know I've talked about those ships I've built before. Actually, I think I've even shown, I know I've shown one of them on stream. Just as a size comparison. But in order to do this right, I probably ought to get a, a mixer that I can actually uh, better mix the sound with. Just using the de defaults from OBS. So you know when my stream career kicks off, I'll have to work on that. You may have noticed I'm using a just a little tile uh, as a backing to cut the, uh, the photo etch connections off. You need kind of a hard surface. These these mats that I like, they, these rubberized mats, just don't provide enough uh, to push against when when cutting the metal pieces apart. I mean, that might cut off one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Okay, I didn't see the last one go on the tanner.
it's a little easier to keep uh, chat going on when I'm in game or something. So I'll have other people usually in the voice call with me, so it's not just me. Apparently my dog is sleeping with uh, one of his eyes open and rolled back. Devil dog. One thing I like about Infinity's sets, um, the sprue material is, is pretty thick, so it, it provides pretty sturdy support for the pieces. But then the connections are quite thin, so it makes it quite easy to, uh, to cut things loose. A lot of uh, photo etch I've worked with you end up with one or the other. Everything is kind of thick, and so you have to work to cut things apart. Sometimes things go pinging off into the distance, never to be seen again. Um, other times, everything is thin, including the backing. So you have to be careful not to bend other things while you're you're handling the photo etch. I know some people do this with, with gloves, too, because um, the oils on my fingers is interacting with the, the metal a little bit. Um, but it's never bothered me before. So. A quick look at these to see if any of them need cleaning. Looks like a few of them might. So I'll get those all off to one side and look at them one at a one, one at a time, and clean them up. Except I just undid what I just did. All right, we have a volunteer, because you didn't want to move. How do you look? You get one that needs to be cleaned. So again, just using the diamond file to get the worst offenders taken care of. I like this file. It's it doesn't take much to uh, clean the bear off. Just a few strokes usually is all it takes. That one looks fine. That one's a mess. It's pretty easy with pieces like this, um, but with real thin or like uh, wiry uh, pieces, you really got to be careful not to bend what you're trying to clean. Ah, she has a voice. Pro tip, do not drop the tiny piece. See, you're fine. You two are fine. You're fine. 
Oh, it needs cleaning. That one's fine. That's fine. That one's fine. Fine. These guys are fine. Good. You're fine. Couple need a little cleaning here, I think. Oh, I'm glad it's helpful. Yeah, tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. Lots of different kinds of tweezers. I'll show you in a second. So you got the regular just the tweezers. I like a lot of times working with curved tipped tweezers. I do have some straight tip. Um, like like this, uh, same brand that, that worked pretty well, but I tend to prefer the curved tip. I'm not sure why, but that's just me. I also like the uh, alligator grip. I have those also with uh, curved tips as well. Um, really good to hold things when you're spray painting so you don't, you don't spray paint your hand. Um, Uh, but yeah, just lots of different uh, lots of different tweezers. I never seem to have enough of them. Every every time I get a couple more, and I think that's all I'll ever need, and then I'm I'm very wrong. But. All right, uh, those are cleaned up enough for me. Again, they could probably be cleaned up a little bit more, but could be a little better. But that's fine. So I'm just going to grab one of the ones that we've already done, one side of, make sure I'm actually putting it on the side that doesn't have an end cap. I'm going to need to top off my glue here in a minute, it's starting to, uh, to dry out, but it's still good for a little bit longer, maybe enough to get these end caps on, we'll see. <laughs> a lot of things on, on ships like this will be repetitive. Um, when I'm doing any of the anti-aircraft guns, I mean, obviously they're all the same, just in different locations. So in the past, when I've actually assembled them, you just go through the motions over and over again. Maybe just about time to retire this particular set of tweezers. The ends don't come together quite as precisely as they used to. Yeah, like I say, hopefully, uh, if not this stream, and, and I may not stream everything to do with the photo etch, um, I get through all the things that I said I would at the beginning of that maybe, but um, there are a couple of things that I know are probably going to be frustrating, and I might not stream those. <laughs> uh, 
try to keep this content uh, relatively clean. Nobody wants to hear me cussing. But um, hopefully, if not next stream, then the stream after, maybe I'll actually have some uh, some painting to do. Those will probably be shorter streams, because once things have got paint on them, I've got to wait for things to dry before I can mask them and paint them. But um, I think I might have just put that one back in the wrong, the wrong bin. I did. It has one on both ends. This one's missing one. Because, like, for the uh, the hull, it's, it has three three colors that it'll need. It'll need the the hull red. It'll need the uh, hull blue. And then it'll need the black water line. And. Uh, I've got to paint one, mask it, paint the other, mask it, and then paint the third. So that it just takes some time because you don't want to put masking tape on wet paint. The paint takes longer to dry than you think. I, I don't like to put tape on paint for at least 24 hours. And if it's a gloss coat, forget about it. Like a, like a, a clear gloss. I wait days for that, to, that stuff to cure. Which is kind of a pain on things like my, my air, aircraft that I've built. Because I'll get the base coat co color down, say it's a olive drab. Um, and then I'll put a gloss coat on top of that. And i got to wait a couple days for that to dry. And then I'll put the decals on top of those, then I gotta wait at least a day for them to really dry. And then I'll put another gloss coat on top of that, wait a couple days for it to dry, and then I put the flat coat on it. <laughs> so, none of those things individually takes very long, but the uh, time between the steps is a little slow. So these detail streams, like this one, like the one I did last time, um yeah you know, they may they may end up being two, three, four hours long. Modeling streams will probably be between an hour and two if I had to bet. You want to see past streams. I do have them up on YouTube. Both for this ship as well as uh the last couple of builds I've done. So the last build I did was a uh, Stug German World War II mobile gun. And before that I did a Japanese Zero. So I've got those streams up on YouTube. They're under I'm Johnny Five there as well. Uh, pure. Curious. Um, won't be any music there because the uh, way copyright laws work. Um, music streaming right now is actually only streaming to where I can hear it and you guys can hear it right now. It's not actually getting recorded. Um, I've tried to find music that says I can I can use in not get copyright strikes and things like that. Um, so I just don't like dead air. Um, but I haven't gotten to work quite right. I just haven't put much time into it yet. Yeah, so the count of viewers, if that's what you're talking about, um, is kind of weird sometimes. It doesn't always... Um, refresh very quickly. And also, if, if you are not 
if your sound volume is not up, like if you have your sound volume to zero on either of your of the of the uh, places you're watching, that doesn't count either. So like if I had my phone up just to count as an extra viewer <laughs> or something, but turn the sound down, it doesn't actually count. So um, it has to have sound to be counted as a viewer. Now if you both have sound on yours, and then I don't know why it says one, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, so it may be, if you, like I say, if you, if you only have sound on one of the two places, then it doesn't count uh, towards the viewer count. I used to have a revolving message that said that. You know, if you're if you're just here to chill, you can turn your sound almost all the way down to where you can't hear it, but it's still there. But I got rid of that. If, if it felt kind of weird to have that up, and since I'm not really trying to boost my numbers or anything. <laughs> Two viewers, watch out now. Yeah, I don't I don't tend to get a whole lot of live viewers. Uh, but my YouTubes have actually gotten some pretty good uh, hits. I mean, for me, you know, <laughs> they're not like... Uh, some professional or something. But given the level of work I put into it and the production value or whatever. It's probably fine. Like if I really if I really wanted to try to boost that kind of thing, what I should do is I should just take the content that I'm doing here. Um Oh cool, I'll take a look. And and cut it down. So like there's no reason on YouTube for somebody to sit here and watch me do the twenty of these. Um so if I cut the content down, and instead of having a three hour long stream, it was a 30 minute long stream, that would be better. But that takes time and um, I have to choose where I want to, to uh, spend my time and so far that hasn't been it. Someday I may go back. I mean, I'm, I'd have to re I'd have to download them from YouTube. I don't know what good what quality it would be at at that point because I'm not saving these to my hard drive. Um, some someday I may go back and try it just to see if it's popular at all. I would probably still put up the long form because they're actually I've actually had a few uh, viewers watch entire three hour long streams. I don't know if it's because they forgot they had it up. <laughs> just, just walked away or something. Um, or what. But uh, I have actually seen people watch the whole stream. Or at least the, the stream played all the way through, whether they watched it or not. Had a few nice comments. Had somebody from, uh, was it Brazil? Portugal? I can't remember now. I'd have to go back and look. Argentina? <laughs> I know those are very, very different places, but my memory sucks. Um, who really liked the content, so that was really cool to see. All right, we now have 20 depth charges. Now again, I only need 18 of them, but uh, figured time my hair, I might as well. So I'm going to go grab another bottle of water. Bottle of water. And, uh, then we'll get to the depth charge rack assembly. But I have wireless headphones, so you guys can come with me. Yeah, it's got, you got to figure out where to use your time, right? I mean, 
between modeling and reading and catching up on TV shows and playing with the dogs and playing video games and working, which I guess is important. Sleep, which is very important. Um, there's not enough hours in the day. I need to win that lottery. That would free up some time. Alas. You have to actually play a lottery to win it, and since I don't do that, I guess it's not going to happen. All right. I've fallen in love with these ice uh, bottled waters the sparkling water the various flavors never really liked sparkling water before them my wife tried them and didn't like them or forgot about them or something and i tried them once and now i'm getting hooked on them all right so we've got all of our depth charges assembled um so now we actually need to assemble the racks so there's actually multiple pieces to them um, the bottom and sides are one part. Then you put the depth charges in, and you've got the top that goes over them. And then there's some braces across the, for the bottom and top. And then the crane, or the, the, the hoist, can either be mounted stowed or uh, vertical. I will probably mount them vertically. Assuming I can actually find a place to install them on the deck. Uh, because again, these, these aren't really meant for this kit. So um, these, are, these are specifically destroyer depth charge sets. Um, so I'll have to figure out exactly how I'm going to put them on here. Um, but that's a problem for another day. So, we'll do them one at a time. I'll actually follow what I said earlier and only do one at a time. Especially since uh, a lot of these braces are uh, sized, to be specific. <laughs> Explodey cans go in the ocean. Yes, that's where you'd, that's where you'd want them to go when they were uh, in use, that's for sure. All right, so. I actually didn't see your entire message. I'll go look at your, at your friends to see how they do their videos, see what I can do to improve. All right, so we will go through and remove one of these from the sprue. So here we want to be careful not to bend things in directions we don't want them to bend. So here we have to be careful not to do like a dragging motion um, with the blade because you can um, cause a bend where you don't want one. This is where real sharp uh, exacto blades go, come in handy. But yeah, I, I knew. I know if I wanted to actually have a following, a growing channel, as it were, effort that I'm not making would need to be made. No doubt about that. All 
I know my modeling skill is is fine. My production skill <laughs> needs work. All right. So that is the bottom and sides of one of the depth charges, depth charge racks. So, um, it has some detail, again, probably too small to be seen. Um, but these um, extensions actually fold over and under to uh, provide some thickness and some detail. Um, and you want to make sure you're actually folding out the side that has the detail on it. <laughs> Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the detail. So uh, what I mean is that literally just take this piece. It's got a pre-marked a pre, uh, spot for the fold, and it just folds over. I'm not going to fold them all the way over yet. Actually, before I fold them, I need to clean them. Um, it's skipping a step, but I'll fold them over. I won't fold them all the way over, and then I'll do a, a dab of super glue to uh, hold the two halves in place. But it's a, a neat way to uh, very easily uh, gain some thickness on on a part where our, while the rest of it stays um, thin. Just going through and cleaning up some of the burrs. Here's where you have to be really careful because it's quite easy to bend uh, bend things out of shape. Um, so it takes a bit of a fine hand. Worst, com worst comes to worst, something bends out of shape or pops off. I can get it back in place, it's fine. But it's not ideal. There were only a couple of spots that I was really worried about. That one there. So again, I'm going to get these folded over most of the way. Just looking to see what all needs to get folded over here. So all of these little legs need to fold over. And you want to be careful with Photo Etch. Um, can bend it. In many cases you, you have to bend it, but you can only bend it so many times before the connection point will actually just snap. And that's not a good place to be. So there are smaller parts that also need to be bent. I'm going to bend and glue all the legs down first. And then come back and get the smaller pieces. So just so you can kind of see, maybe. All I've done is kind of bend those pieces most of the way over. And now I'll come back with a little bit of super glue to uh, attach the two halves together. I'll top off my little well here. I 
I forgot how detailed these were, so when I made my plans with the three things I planned on doing today, I may have been a little ambitious. But we'll see. So here especially, I don't want to use much glue. Um, For two reasons. One, I don't want to glue it to my tile, <laughs> but also because um, these pieces are very thin, and the super glue the super glue between them would actually become obvious. Just making sure everything is lined up like it's supposed to be, and we do it again. A little bit of glue. Actually, this works pretty well for this. I'm actually going to come back and do a little bit of cleanup of some of those barriers once I have these folded over because they'll be stronger. And they were just loose. Ooh, that one was already getting kind of loose on this connection. That was the first one that I bent and then decided to bend back to clean up. So I really only got a couple bends out of it before it decided to uh, not have any more give and just snapped. But I already had it in place, so it didn't matter. So that was lucky. What do you think about the uh, forward-facing camera angle? Is it helpful? Just annoying. I thought maybe it would be a little bit use more useful than just the uh, down-facing camera. You can actually see more or less what I'm looking at, although the resolution is not great. You like it? Okay. I just thought it added a nice perspective, and um, it's just using my cell phone, so it's not a, uh, it's not really getting in the way like a full camera might. Yeah, that was my other thought that. Uh, you know, sometimes the position I'm holding something in, one camera or the other might not be able to see it, but one or the other should, if not both. So, good. Might play with the positioning or the, the zoom. Right now it's just the standard camera, but I've got a zoom lens on here too that I can use if that's better, but... Thought I'd test it. Second time I've used it, I guess. The first time was like midstream. I stumbled upon this app that I could use to connect OBS with it, and uh, it still had uh, the watermark on it because I hadn't paid for the app yet. I guess I used it last time as well, but 
Didn't get much feedback on it. But I like it. Like I say, it's not really in my way, so. Oh, good. No, it's kind of hard to see. I need I need to use a uh, either move my camera closer to the overhead or use a a better zoom. Right now I've got a 24 to 70 on on this camera, on on the down the down facing camera. But I should probably do my my uh, 70 to 70 to 200. I could zoom in closer, especially when I'm doing this this small work like this. I've thought that before. I've just been lazy and haven't gotten it out. All right, so we've got all of the strut legs folded down. There are a couple of other small pieces that also need to be folded down. Cool. I'm glad they're both useful. And actually, my top camera only shows a portion of my workspace, right? So it's, it's a little bit messier than you might think. I zoom all the way out. But. Uh, so there are a couple small pieces that need to be bent over as well. Um, get this is the same angle as the picture. No, that's not right. Okay, here we go. OCD messy. <laughs> are you saying are you saying that it's triggering your OCD because it's messy, or it's because are you saying it's messy for someone who has OCD? Or both somehow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's organized chaos. Okay, I need to bend what? I need to bend that and that. Those two little things. That guy. And two on this end. Right? Looks like it. Confused though. All right, a couple small pieces to bend here. No worries. Like I said, I'm not really overly concerned about the viewer count. It's nice to think that there are people here, but mostly I'm just doing this in case there's somebody who's interested and wants to watch more than trying to get any sort of sort of viewing count or anything. I thought about doing the whole Twitch affiliate thing, and I've got the I've got the necessary number of followers and stuff for that, but me. Come on, 
the little piece does not want to. There we go. All right. <laughs> Johnny Five is in fact alive. Yes. I've actually had people come into my stream just to say that and then leave. All right, I'm going to come and put a touch of glue on those. I already bent them all the way over to contact, but uh, they're in a position such that it's just a little bit of glue is all I really need to keep them in place. All right, so we've got that taken care of. Now I'm going to try to interpret arrows in the two-dimensional. <laughs> Shouting references about cosplays. I'm sure that's uh, always a good time. How does that bend up? Um... Sorry, Mike. Discord's blowing up. Just a second. Let's see, how is that? Okay, that's what I thought. So, I've got to bend. There's this very little point here that I need to bend up so that the sides can then bend in. Um, yeah. I need to make sure the detail is on the outside. So, detail is currently, yep, currently facing down. So I'm going to use my bending pliers to hold the part that I need to bend vertical, and then just get it in the right position. Then use it to bend like that. So now we're starting to get the three-dimensional structure. So now we bend one side in. I need something with a little bit more grip. So here we're taking into in, taking advantage of the uh, pre-bent are the pre-marked spaces of the bend, so they bend nice and clean, these, these Infini kits usually do. Mm. Sorry, I keep having to take a drink. <clears throat> Throat scratchy today. So I need to glue this bent side in to its... Uh, mating points on the side. Pro tip, don't drop the small thing.
I'm just trying to take a look to see exactly where this needs to line up. It needs to line up along the bottom there, and then this bottom the tip actually needs to bend down a little bit. Not much though, just a little bit. Even that was too much. Still too much. There we go. All right. So I'm going to run a line of super glue along the outside of the bottom rack here. And I don't need much. I just need enough to. Uh, Bond with the metal side, line it up, get a little stubborn, no. move my finger before <laughs> it becomes permanently attached. Make sure that we're square. And there we go. One side glued on. I don't know that I saw saw pictures of those cosplays. You'll have to share those sometime. That doesn't seem square. Why are you not square? When I'm, I'm building a structure out of photo etch like this, I tend to look at it from a lot of different angles just to try to make sure that uh, if something's supposed to be a 90 degree angle, it actually is. Um, you've got a little bit of working time with super glue, most super glues, but not much. And then it becomes quite brittle, so that if you try to bend it later, it'll actually just break the super glue. So. Now, we add the depth charges. Um, and it looks like we add the depth charges, and then we add the top of the rack, and then we swing the other side closed. I would rather swing the other side closed and then add the top, but. It will be what it will be. So um, I'm going to start with depth charges at the very back and work my way forward. Um, I need nine of them per side. I'm not going to be real picky about which side's which. Uh, light, I'm going to. Probably going to put the, the single mark. Oops, not like that. Okay, double mark out. Just kind of seeing how they fit in here, just to make sure that I remember how they need to line up. I'm going to see if I can dry fit them all in here and then come back and add some super glue. My guess is that as I start adding these, they're going to go a little wonky and I'll have to uh, add them one at a time. But I'm not exactly sure how these need to fall. So don't want to start. Well, that didn't work. I don't really want to start gluing these in until I'm sure of their positioning. May not have a choice though. Because the rails that these sit on are quite narrow. Since I only have one 
one side. Not much to hold them in place. these back take these off and glue them one at a time but I'm just gonna see how they fit in there because yeah, they're just going to be all walk all wonky in there that's okay this is just a test fit see if I start all the way at the back where how far forward these come Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay. So we'll just start all the way at the back. I don't think that's going to fit otherwise. So, put a little bit of glue on the underside of the at the charge. And push it all the way at the back. Good. What I'm also going to do is use this tweezer to hold everything flat because it's not quite level with the um, other legs still out there. from a different angle.
So it keeps slipping a little bit. Definitely don't want you under the dark, death charge rack. Stubborn. Six down. I forgot how tedious these uh, death charge wrecks were. They look great when they're done, but oof. Working on this for two hours now. All right, got our nine depth charges in. Ugh. Leaning back to stretch my back for a second. I may do the other one of these off stream just because there's no point in doing the same thing twice. All right, we need the top.
All right, and that needs to be up. Slight bend to the end. Very slight bend. So that will go along the inside of the top rail. I think I'm going to close the other side first so I can make sure this lines up right. Refresh my super glue. Fresh super glue here. I also like to keep my super glue in just a peanut butter jar with a bunch of desiccant. All those silica bags that you get in various packages and stuff keeps it from drying out so quick. I need a toothpick too. Because even super glue in the bottle will eventually start drying out. I think we can get the top in there a little better. I 
think on the second one I'm probably going to go ahead and put the two sides on before dropping the, the depth charges in there. I think that's just going to be easier. I think that's what I did last time, to be honest. I think I made the same mistake. I did exactly what it said in the instructions. Didn't like it. <laughs> did my own thing the second time. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see in the abstract at the start, right? What What is he doing? What is all these pieces? But now it's kind of starting to uh, come to life. You know, as animate th inanimate things often do come to life, right? You need to actually make sure that's down in between the two sides because there's actually those struts that go across the top. Which is why they want you to, to put them one side on at a time. But uh, maybe it just lines up a little bit better after putting the sides together. All right, so there is most of it. The two depth charge racks are actually sided. Um, has this little triangular piece that would normally hang off the edge. Uh, that's one thing I'm not really sure about how it's going to work uh, on this particular ship, uh, but we'll see how it works. Worst comes to worst, uh, I have to use the um, the other photo etch set I've got, and uh, I might pull these apart to scavenge the depth charges. But I uh, actually like the way these look better than, than the white ensign photo etch pieces. So, so um, now we actually need to put some more struts across the bottom. These are actually specific in what numbers they are. Um, It's these very little, very little struts here. Probably hard to see. Cross braces, probably a better word for them. And the depth of them, height of them, height of them, increases as you go forward along them, along the depth charge rack. So it actually provides the correct slope for it. So I think it's very cool. These are very, very small pieces. I'm not even sure the camera's gonna pick these up, to be honest. But they go between the little uprights that we folded earlier, one of the first things that we did. Theoretically, at least.
one. <laughs> And yeah, I think what I'm going to do is finish this one and then try out one of the two float planes. Um, probably won't get to the any aircraft mounts today. I'll stop the stream for a while, grab some dinner, play with the puppies, that kind of thing. Then I put the stream back up later, um, doing some Final Fantasy. But we're not quitting just yet. Slowly adding the little feedies. We'll do the same thing across the top, but they're actually all the same piece, uh, same size. These actually, like I said, are increasing in height as you go forward from the stern. Provides the right uh, angle off the deck for the racks. Which again, I think is really cool that they include this detail. Oh yeah, I'm not done yet, Emmy. Um, just kind of, kind of thinking about, thinking aloud about my uh, my plans for the next little bit. Probably gonna go for another hour or so if I had to guess. That, need, that needn't mean you stick around, though. <laughs> if you've got stuff to do away from a screen or are tired of looking at little pieces or hearing my voice, too bad. No, I mean, do what you got to do. I just, as usual, was um, overestimating how much I was going to get done today. I just forgot how detailed these uh, these racks were. Oh, don't get stuck to the tweezer, please. Thank you. All right. Now we've got the bottom in place, we can flip it over. Same thing for the top. How many of these do we need? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, give you extras of this. That's nice. <laughs> In case you just destroy one of them or they fly off into the nether.
Do you remember that game, Emmy? The, the Nether? It was that uh, early access game that we tried playing for a while. It was not very great. We kept dying a lot. Yeah. I went back to their, or tried to go back to their forums once. This has been some time ago now. <laughs> and, uh, I got all kinds of antivirus and malware warnings. doesn't want to line up quite right. The attachment point for this one got a little messed up, um, so it doesn't want to sit where it's supposed to. Stay. Some of these little top cross beams we actually have like a saddle that sits over a specific place. It actually has like a little indention that it's supposed to sit in. So everything's got to line up just so, or it won't uh, won't work.
All right. So this was the right one. So I need to use 3R. 4R? Yep. So these are sided. So I have to make sure that I'm putting the cranks and things on the correct side. to go on the inside. Forgot to fold something over, actually. Silly me. I thought that looked a little odd. It's because it was. And crank handle. <laughs> it only needs two crank angles, handles, but they give you two of them. Uh, twice the number you need. Because these things are just tiny, tiny. See if I can get this in spot. Nice. First try. All right. So that is one of the two depth charge racks. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Oh, there it is. So I don't. I'm not going to do it right now on camera. But there's also these uh, pulley systems that uh, I need to decide if I want to put up or down. So I am going to hold off on that because it will depend somewhat on how uh, things line up here. So there you have it. One of two. Depth charge racks. So for the moment, I'm going to put my unused, thus far unused, depth charges back in their little baggie. Two of them actually got kind of glued down onto the plastic here. Give me a minute, I'm gonna bag these back up. Just so I've got everything in one place. And then let's take a look at one of the foot planes. So just a second. I'm gonna decide whether or not we're gonna do that today. Probably gonna be a uh, coming attractions thing, honest. My back's starting to hurt. Getting that old sucks. I'm just putting these back in their bags to protect them. Um, and also, like I say, to uh, keep track of them. Alright, so let's let's at least look at what we've got to do for the boat planes. So um, the San Francisco had two catapults, one on each side, at least in, in, in uh, her early war configuration. They took one off later, um, but in her early war configuration she had two catapults. Um, and four float planes. Two of them would be stored in a hangar, and the other two would be could also be stored on their hangar, of course, too. But but uh, I'll I'll build it with uh, with them out on the uh, on the catapults. So the fun part is. Yeah, I was afraid of they are all clear plastic. So they are all molded in clear plastic, which is great in that I can mask the canopies and I'll have a clear canopy and everything else will be painted. The bad news is clear plastic is often quite brittle. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge because I don't know if you oh, let me see if I can, maybe the uh, kit instructions show this better. Yeah. So in the overhead camera, let me turn the other camera off for a second. Go away. All right. Um. So here we have the instructions for the the, the float planes. And there are a couple things here that I have to, to, to replace. The prop comes off. Although the prop as molded is not bad. Um, so we'll see, I might, I might leave that on. However, these vertical struts on, on either side and just on either side of the, can of the, uh, of the fuselage, 
the vertical struts on the floats and the connection points, and the uh, the um, carousel that that would attach this to the catapult are all solid. So you can see they're they're. This is probably the easiest one to focus on. It's just a solid piece here. If you look at the instructions from the photo etch, I've got to cut those off and replace them. So I got to replace them here. Here's the the prop struts, 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 carriage. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's going to be a thing to do for sure. So I think this has already been running for two, almost three hours here. I think what I'm going to do, and I apologize, I did not get as far as I that I said I would at the beginning. But I think what I'm going to do is is cut this stream here either tomorrow during the day or during the week I'll build the other depth charge rack off stream and I'll probably try one of these uh, float planes off stream first just so that I can see if it's even feasible to do must be because it's in the instructions but if it's feasible on my skill level um, and if I can get it to work then I will do the other one on stream and um, also try the 1.1 millimeter mounts. I may try one of those off stream too. Or what, not 1.1 millimeter, 1.1 inch. Huh. 75 caliber anti aircraft guns. But I think that's what we're going to do. So uh, today I set out with very ambitious goals, and as is usually the case, I fell way short of them. But that's okay. Um, it's not a race, thankfully, because I would lose. Um, would you please go in there? Um, so yeah, like I said, I think I'm going to drop here. Um, I will likely be putting up another stream today around uh, 6 p.m. Central. That'll be Final Fantasy. So if you're not interested in that, then you know, that's fine. Um, but we're going to be teaching and learning some of the current harder fights to some friends. So that should be interesting. So that'll be around 6 if you want to join for that. Otherwise, um, next weekend, if I stream modeling, it would be either later in the day on Saturday or maybe Sunday. I've got something going on in the morning that, that next weekend. That will preclude this probably, but uh, we'll see where we go. So that's a long-winded way to say thanks for hanging out. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something, and uh, we will catch you next time. Thanks for hanging out, Emmy and Kara. <laughs>